So in the last video, we were talking about uh, features of graphs, so zeros, y-intercepts, horizontal and vertical asymptotes, and also maxes and mins. So the last thing we looked at were maximum or minimum values. So this is an example of a global minimum. These are examples of local maximums. But uh, basically the idea is uh, some people actually call these uh, vertices as well. So with a quadratic equation like this one is, uh, this will be something that will actually have a um, vertex. So we'll be learning about that a little bit later on, but a vertex is actually very similar to a minimum. In fact, sometimes a vertex is the minimum, like in this case right here. But as far as uh, doing examples, and let's take a look at uh, a specific one here. So for f of x, remember this is just function notation, so no reason to panic about this. But for f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2, I've uh, devised a couple of questions here. So first of all, we want to know what f of 3 is. Then I'm going to ask for the coordinates of the maximum or the min value. In other words, I want the vertex because this is quadratic. And then after that, I'm also going to ask about the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts and any horizontal or vertical asymptotes. Now we're going to do this using the graphing calculator uh, for the graphs, but we'll just take a look and see what we can do by hand. I always prefer to do everything by hand that I can possibly do. So in this case, uh, let's say I do this all, yeah, I'll keep going in blue then. So f of 3, that just means what's the function value when I put in x equals 3. See here it's f of x, now I want f of 3. So that means in this equation, wherever I see an x, I replace it with 3. So in that case then it's going to be, well, 3 squared plus 3 minus 2. And then if I want to be careful then, 3 squared is not 6. It's 3 times 3, which is 9, plus, uh, now I can say 3 minus 2, well that's 1, so I could say therefore that, that's a little symbol for therefore, f of 3 equals 10. So that's my answer for this first one. Not too bad, whoops, I'm not very good at drawing squares apparently. Now I want to do the coordinates of the maximum or minimum value. In other words, I'm looking for the vertex. So maybe I should uh, use my trusty graphing calculator here. I'd better clear all these graphs of what I was doing before, and I'd better uh, just get my uh, window to be standard here. So zoom standard, so that was zoom six. So let's take a look at this uh, equation. Whoops, I guess I need to move it over here. So I wanna do this graph right here, x squared plus x minus two. So x squared plus x minus two. I'm going to press graph. Now we can see this graph. It showed up pretty fast. I can zoom in if I want a little bit. So I can do zoom fit, which is actually zero. Uh, that was maybe a bit much. Maybe I'll go back and do zoom standard again and just leave it there. That's this. There we go. That's maybe better. Uh, maybe I can just zoom in a little bit. Maybe I'll zoom in right along this center point here. There. That's what I was hoping to see. So something like this then, can I find the coordinates of the maximum or minimum? Well, sure, in this case right here, uh, if I look at this graph, there's a minimum right here. This right here is the minimum value. So I can ask my calculator, well, not literally, you don't talk to it, but uh, you can have it calculate something for you. So this little blue calc is important. So second, and then I press this key, and I want not the value or the zero, I want the minimum or maximum. Now what was it? It was a... Uh, whoops, I guess I can't see it. It was a minimum, so I want the minimum. I'm tempted to click here, but uh, I have to press 3. So it asks me for the left bound. This is important because it needs to know sort of where you're looking at. So I should be, this is a bit messy, but uh, my point right now is somewhere here. So I need to go a little bit to the left of that point. So I've clicked left, and now I'm somewhere along here. So I say that one. It wants the right bound. That means it wants to know, basically it wants to know where my minimum is lying between. So it's between this point and watch when I press this over here. Do you notice it's only gonna look then between here and here. It's not gonna bother looking over here or over here. It's only gonna look here to here. So it's important to put your cursor in the middle and then go to the left when it says left bound. Go to the right of that middle point when it says right bound. And when it says guess, well, put your cursor somewhere in the middle, so maybe there-ish, and press enter. And it's going to tell me this. So these are the coordinates that I need. So it's going to be uh, roughly, uh, I mean, this is pretty much a minus 0.5, and this is minus 2.25. 
So just from that, then I can say that's the coordinates of my minimum. So x equals, um, what did we say? We said it was uh, minus 0 0.5, and we had y was um, minus 2.25. Now that's the x and y values. If I want the coordinates, we normally write it like this. Right? With the x value first, comma, and we put in the y value. So this right here would be the answer to that question. That's pretty nice. Um, and what this means though is that this is the actual coordinates of this point right here. Right? This is the minimum here. Right? So that's what we just found. We just found this graph basically did this. Right, I went down and it did something like this. Right, and this right here, that was that was the coordinates of this point right here. Now let's look at the next part. I wanted the y-intercepts. Now if you remember what we talked about for y-intercepts, uh, what we're asking for then is where the graph crosses the x, uh, sorry, the y-axis. Right, that's the y-intercept. So this is the x-axis here. This is the y-axis. So if I want to know where it crosses the y-axis, just think, what's the x value here? Well, x is 0 at this point. So that's what we had talked about before. I don't know if you remember this last video, I said, for a y-intercept, it's easy. Just set x equal to 0. So I'm going to do that here. Whoops. So here, I'm just going to set x equal to 0. So if x equals 0, what do I get from my y value? Remember, f of x, you can just replace that with a y. So what is my y value when x is 0? Well, I just put in... I mean, you could say 0 squared plus 0 minus 2. That's a bit tedious, though, because 0 squared is still 0. 0 just does nothing. So I just get y equals minus 2. That was easy. Now, the x-intercepts are a little bit harder. There, uh, we need to possibly use our calculator for this. So if I look at this, and I'm going to ask it for the x-intercepts, which I'm pressing this little calc here. Those are called the zeros. So I'm going to go down to this point and say 0. Now it wants the left bound, so what I have to do is get my little cursor over to this. Remember, these are the points, these zeros or roots or intercepts. Those are these points right here, where it crosses this and where it crosses uh, the x-axis here. So there's a point here and here. I want to know those coordinates, so I'm going to put my cursor right in the middle. So right, uh, well, as close as I can to the actual um, x-axis crossing point, so there it is. It wants a left bound, so I go a little bit to the left of that. I press enter. It wants a right bound, so I go a little bit to the right of that, just to make sure it can find it. I press enter, and it wants a guess. I need to make sure my guess is in the middle. If ever you don't uh, do it right like this, it'll tell you sometimes uh, that there's an error. But in this case, x equals minus 2 and y equals 0. Well, that was easy, so x equals minus 2. That's one of my intercepts. But there's two of them in this case. So let's go find the other one. The other one is over here. So, uh, tediously, I have to move my cursor way over there. Do, 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 do. I don't know about you, but it's, whoops. And unfortunately, I did something really stupid. I should have been doing calculate and saying zero. There we go. Now I should go to the right. Before that, I was just moving my cursor across the screen. I want to follow the graph. So that's why I had to do calc. Notice it's wanting the left bound. So again, if I'm going to use my same trick as before, I'm going to say, okay, here we go. I've got this. Uh, I guess that's close enough, right about, that's where I am right now. So if I want the left bound, I have to go a little bit to the left of that point. I press enter. It wants the right bound, so I have to go back to the middle and make sure I go to the right of it. Say enter, and then put my cursor somewhere in the middle for my guess. And I'm going to get x equals 1. So I can say that as well. So x is also equal to 1. Those are the two places where it crosses the x-axis, or the x-intercepts. Now are there any horizontal or vertical asymptotes? Those are places, remember, where the x or y values are not defined. In other words, like we had, whoops, back here, we looked at an example here where there was some, some weird spots where you know, the y value couldn't be this, and the x, va uh, sorry, the x value couldn't be this, and the y value couldn't be this. I mean, it could be any other y values, but it can't be this particular, whatever that y value was. In this case of this graph, there's no problems. This is a quadratic equation. So there's actually no asymptotes. There's no places where it can't be. Um, I mean, we could talk about domain and range and say, well, it's not defined somewhere else, but it's not. There's, there's no problem where the graph is undefined. 
So in this case right here, then we could say that the vertical asymptotes, well, there's actually none. So there's no places where there's an error, so to speak, when you're trying to figure out your graph. So here I could say then uh, horizontal or vertical asymptotes, there are none. So that's how we can work with questions like this.